Breaking news first at four out of Davidson County, where a father and daughter have been sentenced in the death of Jason Corbett. Molly Corbett and Thomas Martins both received anywhere from 51 up to 74 months in jail. That's roughly four to six years, but they will get credit for the time they've already served since they were first convicted in Jason's death, and that will take almost four years off that entire sentence. And we do have team coverage this afternoon. Our Maria DeBone is standing by with more on the closing arguments the judge heard today. But we begin with Chris Peterson. Chris, we heard from Jason Corbett's daughter, who was very emotional in the courtroom. That's right, Devante. I cannot overstate how incredibly emotional it was today in courtroom six in the Davidson County Courthouse today. We heard victim impact statements from the Corbett family, uh, beginning with Tracy Lynch Corbett, the sister of Jason Corbett, and also we heard from the son and uh, daughter of Jason Corbett. Jason Corbett's daughter described her dad as her biggest supporter. She said, all I wanted was a father-daughter dance, and I will never get that. She also went on to say, he will never get to walk me down the aisle. My life is filled with anniversaries of death. Now, there was a considerable amount of sobbing and crying from everybody in the courtroom as uh, Jason Corbett's daughter continued to, tes to testify and continued to talk about how Molly twisted her words and manipulated them. Um, she said, I was used by her. She used my words to get out of prison. While friends are at parties, I'm at therapy. Uh, she continued to say, my dad really cared about Molly and that Molly coached us to say the things that, that she and her brother said in those interviews right after Jason Corbett's death uh, in 2015. Now, uh, after the judge sentenced both Molly and Thomas, uh, Nobody from the Corbett family uh, was willing to speak to us on camera. Tracy Lynch Corbett did say as she was exiting the courtroom that uh, um, there are no winners here today. Uh, she went on to say uh, as she exited the courtroom that uh, this is not a day to celebrate. Now, uh, we did speak with Jones Bird and Jay Vinoy, who were the attorneys for Thomas Martins, and we asked them if they felt like justice had been served in this case. Um, Martins has lived, I mean, I don't know how he could live a better life. I mean, he's never raised his voice, never lost his temper. Something in that room caused him to do that, and he's having to pay for that. So 51 months is more than just. And they also went on to say that they believe Thomas Martins and Molly Corbett will be in prison for roughly seven months. In Davidson County, I'm Chris Peterson, WXII 12 News. All right, Chris, thank you. And before those sentences were handed down, the judge did spend the morning hearing closing arguments. Maria DeBone continues our team coverage first at 4 o'clock with more on what was said today. Maria. Well, the state prosecutor's argument was that Molly's sole purpose was to marry Jason, divorce him and take the kids, whereas the defense was stating that Jason was abusive towards Molly. Now, during closing arguments, state prosecutor Alan Martin said Jason's statement died with him. At one point, Martin was tearful, pointing to the Corbett children and said it is nothing but a miracle that these two children don't have the sights and sounds of that night forever seared in their brains. He ended his closing argument saying that three people walked into the, that room that night in 2015 and that two walked out unscathed and one was carried out. For the defense, Molly's attorney said that evidence suggests Jason was prone to physical violence against Molly and that all lethal hits were from the bat, not the paver. Martin's defense said he had walked into a parent's worst nightmare and that he had no choice but to defend himself and his daughter. They also stated that Martin's actions may have been excessive but argue that Jason were two. And when Jason's kids came out of the courtroom later this afternoon, I asked if they had com any comment and they did not answer. Live in Davidson County, Maria DeBone, WXII 12 News. Maria and Chris, thank you both. And this has been a case we've been following for at least eight years now. It started on August 2nd of 2015 when Jason Corbett was found dead inside his home on Panther Creek Court. Molly Corbett and Thomas Martins were charged in the case. Two years later, they went on trial for Jason's murder. 
In 2017, the jury convicted Corbett and Martins of second degree murder and both were sentenced to between 20 and 25 years in prison. Defense attorneys appealed the verdicts soon after. And in February of 2020, the state court of appeals overturned the convictions and ordered for a new trial to be held. Both Corbett and Martins were granted bond and let out of jail. That brings us to earlier this year when a judge ordered a retrial. Jury selection for that was supposed to begin next month before a plea deal was made. We will, of course, continue to follow this developing story with more coverage at 5 and 6. You can also find our full coverage of this case online and sentencing hearings about the latest updates on our website at WXII12.com. All right, turning now to the weather front, a warm and dry day across the triad. We stick with those warm temps for at least one more day before those changes arrive for the Piedmont Triad. Meteorologist Dave Aiken is with us today at 4 o'clock. We need the rain, Dave. Any insight? Need it bad. Devontae, yeah. you're right. Uh, there is a little bit in sight, but I don't think it's going to be a whole lot. Okay. But we do have a pretty good chance of seeing some showers as we get in towards the end of the week, really right around Friday. Temperatures right now into the 70s. It's beautiful outside, really. 78 in Winston-Salem right now, 79 in Lexington. Of course, these temperatures well above normal from this time of year when typically we should be into the 60s for our afternoon temperatures. The breezes have been up out of the south, south southeast, and that's helped to warm us up some today, too. They haven't been real windy, which is good news with uh, all the dry conditions, all the tinder that's on the ground with leaves and twigs and things like that, and the dry conditions across the area. So we don't want a whole lot of high winds, but we may see the breezes pick up during the day tomorrow. 68 West Jefferson, 69 at Boone. So by uh, mountain standards, those are pretty comfortable temperatures and you don't see a whole lot of rain in the southeast right now. There are some showers are way back out over the plain states right now. That's what we'll expect to come in here as we get on into uh, that Friday time frame. Clear and mild as we go into about 8 39 o'clock tonight with our temperatures falling into the 60s. Still mild really and the fire danger is up. We have some increased fire danger for the Piedmont, especially into the foothills and the mountains for the day tomorrow. We'll talk more about that. We'll talk about your weekend forecast. We do have a cool down coming up. We'll talk about that in just a little while. And Dave, those dry conditions are causing the North Carolina Fire Service to expand its burn ban to more counties this afternoon. 16 additional counties will be under that ban starting in less than an hour now at 5 o'clock. That includes Allegheny and Wilkes counties. In Henderson County, crews continue to battle this massive brush fire. The State Forest Service says the fire is now 15% contained. The brush fire has burned more than 400 acres at this point, and several structures have been destroyed. The county remains under a state of emergency right now. Breaking news out of Texas, where an explosion has triggered a large fire at a chemical plant in Shepard. This is aerial footage of that scene. Company leaders of the plant say one employee is injured and is being treated for minor burns. People who live within one mile of this plant are under a shelter in place order. A man is facing a list of charges accused of sexually abusing a child in Dobson. The Surrey County Sheriff's Office says Elmacar Lopez Godinez was arrested after an investigation by the county's Department of Social Services. Deputies say he was previously deported from the United States. He's now in custody and is due back in court later this month. Right now, a Winston-Salem man who mentored middle school students is accused of statutory rape. Joshua Davis has more details on the case and the organization the suspect worked for. Edward Sarmiento was arrested Tuesday after an extensive investigation by the Winston-Salem Police Department. Investigators received a tip back in June about a mentor at Philo Hill Magnet Middle School having an inappropriate relationship with a student. Police have now charged Sarmiento with statutory rape, indecent liberties, and multiple sexual offenses. We're told the alleged offenses didn't happen on campus. Police and Winston-Salem Forsyth County Schools say he was not employed with the school system, but through an outside contractor. As part of an embedded mentoring program that ran from December of 2021 through June of 2022. A spokesperson for the school system says that contractor was Action for Equity, an organization that held a contract with Winston-Salem Forsyth County Schools until it was terminated in June of last year. After it was discovered, a different mentor with the program allegedly had an inappropriate relationship with a student. In Winston-Salem, I'm Joshua Davis for WXII 12 News. And we have, by the way, reached out to Action for Equity for comment but have not heard back yet.
A grim milestone in the city of Greensboro. 65 people have died in homicides this year. That's a record number for the city. Tonight, several groups are coming together to honor the lives lost. And our Kara Peters joins us live from the governmental plaza downtown to explain how they're being honored. Kara. Yeah, Lindsay, that's correct. Several groups are expected to come out here tonight for a community candlelight vigil, and this comes following five homicides in a three day period here in the city, including a mother and daughter. Now, several groups that are expected to come out tonight include the mothers standing against gun violence, families against senseless killings, along with the Greensboro Police Department and the city's Office of Community Safety. The city says the hope is that tonight's event offers some solutions and a space for healing and standing in solidarity. Of course, we will have a recap of tonight's event as well as hearing from some of the attendees. Some of the signs of uh, victims, their faces are already here, so we will be showing you more of that later on tonight. For now, we are live in Greensboro. I'm Kara Peters for WXII 12 News. All right, Kara, thank you. In Commitment 2023, some voters in the triad picked new mayors last night. In High Point, Cyril Jefferson is projected to be the new mayor with unofficial returns showing him winning nearly 56% of the vote. Over in Burlington, unofficial results show incumbent Jim Butler nearly beating challenger Beth Kennett winning a little more than 51% of the votes. And in Lexington, incumbent mayor Jason Hayes beat challenger Burr Sullivan, getting more than 67% of the votes there. You can find a full list of results for all cities and towns by heading online to WXII12.com. Looking ahead, a live look from Miami. We're a little under four hours away from the third Republican presidential debate. Five candidates hoping to be the party nominee will get a chance to speak to voters. We'll have a full preview of that debate coming up at 430. And just a reminder, you can watch tonight's debate right here on WXII 12. It will begin at 8 p.m.